Thank you, Sister Anita. This preaching festival from the, um, from the beginning um, has been one about stark contrasts. Now, you know, Brother Aaron is um, faithful to um, bring these uh, to our considerations. Um, and um, actually, it's assisted me whenever I see a contrast to be able to, to take note of it, to look at it, because they're there for a reason. This contrast uh, in, in the text we have today is, is, is very stark. It's to turn them. Now that, see, repentance is a turning. I mean, these, these contrasts, I mean, you, you can't get any further apart than like from east to west. See that it, they're so far apart they can't come together. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, there's there's so many. I mean, I, I, as I was thinking about this, my mind was just filled with. I mean, there's so many contrasts that we're we are confronted with every single day. You know, like the, the difference between up and down, in and out, the the here and now. There's a here very much here, but there's a there's a then. It's it's not like here because it's then. How about the contrast between heaven and hell? The contrast between a believer and an unbeliever. See, these things, you can't mix these things together. You can't have faith and be an unbeliever because faith changes a person. Amen. There's contrast between being right and being wrong. Now, I know people that are wrong, but they think they're right, but that doesn't make them right. They're wrong. So what needs to happen? They need to be turned. In other words, they need to stop being wrong and start being right. You can't have these things. Love and hate, giving and taking. How about God and Satan? I mean, you can't get any further apart than that. He's, he's the prince of darkness, and God is light. These are stark contrasts, and they're presented this way to get our attention. Because unless our attention is gotten, these things will just pass us right by. I mean, all these great things we've heard this weekend, but unless we give heed unto the things we've heard, they will slip away. That's just the way they, they are. We're living in a world that things just slip away. Well, the exhortation, therefore, is to give all diligence. Give all diligence. It's a contrast. Don't just give some. You think, well, I'll just give some. Well, then you won't get it. In order for you to get anything from the Lord, you have to give all because he won't accept anything other than all. Uh, in, in Paul's case, see, Paul, some have falsely accused Paul of being, of being things that he wasn't. He, Paul was diligent in what he was doing. So diligent, we read that he went and got letters. He was going to put it into this. Because it was against what he, it, it was something that was totally antithetical to what he saw was the truth. And yet, it was hard for him. Because he saw there's something there's something going on there. It was hard for me to hold them closed that day. It's hard for me to see Stephen stoned. It was hard because there was something about this that he didn't understand it. But um, the, God expects you to be diligent in what you already understand before you're ever going to get any more else, anything else. You got to be diligent in what you already know. Our text today speaks of these stark contrasts to so turn them from light to darkness, not from light to something that's kind of, you know, not something kind of like light. Like maybe uh, I'm willing to go this far with the Lord, but when you ask me to give, to hate my mother and father and sister and brother, does that mean that when they come over at 6 o'clock and I got to leave for this, does that mean I can't stay home? And I mean, I only see them once or twice a year. Well, see, you see what I'm saying. To turn, to turn. From light to darkness to light. Now, my, my emphasis, and it may be um, unique, but I, I want to emphasize this today, how amazing it is that God would give this ability or this power to a man. Now, we couldn't say that all men have this power. I, I, I have to admit that I haven't been struck blind in, in the middle of the way and Jesus hasn't told me the things that he told Paul. But my point is that he did tell them to Paul. Yeah. This is what he told them. You're going you're gonna to make him a minister. Yeah. You're going to make it to do what? What are you going to do, Paul? What was your commission from the Lord? To turn people. 
He's going to turn them. And, you know, one of our brothers have already said it wasn't, it wasn't, he didn't turn them through the laying on of hands. It wasn't like Paul went over and laid his hands on you, and I'm going to pray for you, and now all of a sudden you're going to understand. That isn't how he did it. And I'm thankful that it isn't how, that isn't how he did it. Otherwise, it would have, his gift would have passed on with him, right? If he had to physically be here to lay his hands on you for you to understand, well, we, there wouldn't be very many people that understand, that's for sure. But see, he did it through comprehension. In other words, he made the gospel understandable. And so much so, if you listen to, if you give your ear to Paul and listen to what he's saying, listen to the conclusions he comes to, you'll be turned from darkness to light. This was what this will happen. Now that's a ministry. <laughs> I don't mean, mind tell you that. From the power of Satan. Say, well, I've been delivered from, from hell. Well, that's good. What have you been delivered to? From the power of Satan to the power of God. Now we can get something done. All right? Now, you, I've been delivered from the pit, but I haven't just been delivered so I can sit around and tell everybody how much I, it's good to be out of that pit, but it's where I'm going to. It's this power of God under salvation. Now, see, Paul was given to see this, and so he was given to transmit that, that power. It was just as powerful when Paul talked about it as when Jesus revealed it to Paul. Why? Because he understood it. He understood it, and so he could trans, he could be like a conduit of light. He could, he could expose things the way they really were. Amen. And people hated him for it, but he did it anyway. I mean, Jesus even told him, don't worry about it. I'll deliver you from them. <laughs> you look through the record, and he had to be delivered from a lot of people, didn't he? Paul had to be delivered all the time because, see, the message that he, that he was speaking was so potent and so effective that it incited anger and hatred in anyone who didn't receive it. Power, turning from being guilty of sin. And see, there was a guilt associated with sin, and I thank God there is a guilt associated with sin. You ought to feel as guilty as you should be for the sins you've committed. That's how, how much guilt you should have. But you're, he, Paul, if you listen to Paul, and you give heed to his doctrine, the things that he's teaching, this guilt of sin, it, it'll be replaced with what? Sanctified by faith. See, now I know that Jesus really did take my sins away. That has to be ministered. You know, you, you come into the kingdom, you need, you need to really know what happened the day you were baptized. Because when you start seeing what happens, see, now you start experiencing the sanctification that's a, that's a part of, of believing. Now, these things that Paul were given to turn people from, they are as far apart as is possible in this world. It means you, the, the darkness is so much different than the light that you can't turn from one to the other without knowing it, is the point, see? You say, well, I think I'm saved. Well, then you're not saved. Let's just be honest. If you're not sure, if you don't have any confidence, then how, what are you going to do? Well, you're definitely not going to give up what you love un until you see something better. Now, see, this is what Paul had the capacity. Jesus gave him the, the, to be able to make all men see. Now, I tell you, I want to listen to this. I want to listen to this man. All right. See, this man would be the first one to tell you right off the bat. Let me tell you this. This man would be the first one to tell you that this, this, this gift that I've been given, this grace that I've been given is not about me. He would be the first one to tell you, no, the grace is not by works of righteousness that we've done. It's not. It's, it's just. Have you heard of the dispensation of the grace that I've received? Have you heard about that? Paul didn't say, have you heard about me? He said, have you heard about the dispensation of the grace, the, the grace that I've been given to preach Christ? He'd be the first one to tell you that. Amen. See, now, I know a lot of preachers out there that it, it's the last thing they want to tell you because, see, it takes the light off of them. Yeah. And people um, that want to have the light shined on them, well, I don't know. That's what he said. I want to emphasize today. This amazing gift, this amazing power that God gave to Paul. And um, he did it. See, before, um, before 
Paul could do any real effective work, his own eyes had to be open, right? Before he could be given the commission to go out and open the eyes, his eyes had to be opened. And guess what? We, we saw the record about how this happened. Now, we should not think that this type of grace that's given to Paul is unusual. I mean, this is uh, God's work in this way. Look, look at this. God has allowed Satan to blind men's mind, right? Why wouldn't he allow a man to preach a gospel that opens their eyes? This is what it says, 2 Corinthians 4, 3. But if our gospel be hid, attend to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. So you don't receive the gospel, God will allow Satan to come in and blind your mind. You won't be able to receive it another. Remember Jesus said, remember it, it, when a person hears the word of God, but understandeth it not, immediately the wicked one comes. What does he do? He snatches away Amen. that which was sown in his heart. Why? So they won't believe. So they won't come to the knowledge of the truth. So see, it shouldn't shock us then that if God allows those who don't believe to be blinded, then those who do believe well, see, now it would, shouldn't shock us that he, uh, that he would send someone to open their eyes. Open their eyes. Because until your eyes are opened, um, the, the message doesn't, what, if, you don't, if you can't understand the message when it's spoken, what difference does it make what the message was? I mean, I could be telling you all kinds of glorious things, but if you don't understand it, isn't this what Paul was saying to the Corinthians? If, if, if I come in here and I talk all kinds of melodious sounds, but in the end, you don't get the point, well, then I might as well have not even said anything. Paul said, I'd rather speak a few words with understanding than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue because it wouldn't profit you anything. And Paul, believe me, he was all about profiting the saints. This is what Paul was. He wanted to profit the saints. Now, it appears that only those who do not believe the gospel are able to be blinded. Now, I will say it the other way, right? All right. The only way to see clearly, to see Christ, is to not be blinded, to have your eyes opened. Now, see, you're going to have to have a messenger for either one of these things. You're going to have to, you're going to have to either under, you're going to have to hear the gospel. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Paul believed this. Paul knew this. Yeah. And so that's what he did. He would preach Christ. Why? Because he wanted to expose those who had faith. Mostly to themselves. They wanted to be able to see. I, I can understand that. That's something. And not only do I understand it. I desire it. I want that. Well, what happened? Well, it was given unto them to believe. But see, faith came by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Now, you, you can take that couple of different ways they hear the message of the gospel and God gives them to believe which is true or they hear an accurate message okay and and it, pro, it provokes in them a desire to have that accomplished in them now see either the whole point is that their eyes would be opened now what if your eyes aren't open what if you don't believe the message when it's preached well then you're blinded so that's what the, the text just said open their eyes Paul had his eyes opened. Now remember, the scripture give us, they, they, they give us a detailed account of this because it's very important that we understand that Saul is not the one doing this work. It's very important to know that Saul, that, that Saul just didn't one day walking on the road to Damascus just have, just, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm going to try to help these Christians out. I feel sorry for them. Yeah. But see, this isn't, why, why do we have so much of a record about what happened to Saul it's because God's gonna, God wants it known that it was not Saul's work that did this, but it was his, Jesus' work in Saul that converted him, changed him into the person he was. So Acts 9, uh, verse 10 here, it, 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 it's interesting because they, Saul had been so diligent for the Lord that he had made a name for himself, but the name that he had made was against the church against those that had, had, were in this way. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. 
And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. Now, he has heard of this man. Behold, he prayeth and hath seen in the vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, and he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. It's like, I, it, I mean, make sure I got the message clear. Did I hear you right? That you want me to go talk to this man that's persecuting the church, and you want me to lay my hands on him and so he might receive his sight. Let me make sure I'm clear on this. And we've even heard a rumor here that he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all the... You want me to come to him, the one that has the authority to bind anyone <laughs> who is in this way. I, you want me to go to him. And you obviously don't want me to fear that I'm going to be bound and taken to Jerusalem, right? But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he... This is personal now. He is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Now, that's a promise there. That's, that's a good one. That's going to come up, the children of Israel. And we know that he's the minister, the apostle sent to the Gentiles. And we know that he spoke before kings. Yeah, could it be that this is the one that's going to convert the nation of Israel? Could it be that this is the one, his teachings, these things that he opened up, is going to someday provoke Israel to jealousy? Well, we'll see. That's the one I want you to go to, Ananias. I want you to go to him, and I want you to lay your hands on him, and I want you to pray for him that he might receive his sight. Oh. So Ananias went his way. Ananias didn't argue with God. See, this was a saint. This was one of the saints He's a worshiper of God. God said, you go do that. So what does Ananias do? He says, he went his way and entered into the house and put in his hands on brother Saul. He said, brother Saul. They didn't have to take much to convince Ananias of it. Just a word from the Lord. Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received a sight for with, and arose, and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. Now before, I already said this, but before Paul could, could be used to open eyes, he himself had to have his eyes opened. And if this, if this was only the requirement to be a preacher, you just had to have seen something yourself. Well, it would change the face of religion overnight. Your eyes have to be opened before you can ever attempt to open somebody else's eyes. <clears throat> now, Paul, here, you know, you, you're going to learn now that Paul is a unique, a unique person. Now, now, not just because the Lord picked him, chose him from, from his mother's womb, he's going to say. Not just that. As you see how he reacts, how he moves in the kingdom of God, you see this is a choice vessel. This is a choice. This is, there's a reason that God chose him, and um, there's a reason that God's going to use him. He has a unique perspective. Now, this is, God's trained him for this. This isn't something that Paul just got in a moment of time. Paul has been in training, or Saul was in training for this day. It says here, and when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples were at Damascus, and straightway, <clears throat> this is important now, straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. That's what, that's what Paul preached immediately. Amen. Not, my, my point is that Saul didn't have to go away for three years to learn to preach this. He preached this immediately now, okay? That he's the son of God. And they said, but Saul increased the more in strength <clears throat> and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus Proving that this, this one Jesus, was, was there, the very Christ. This is the one all the prophets talked about this one. Jesus of Nazareth. He's a Christ. So it didn't take Paul years of training to be able to preach Christ right out of the chute. Right as soon as he believed, as soon as he received his sight, he went preaching Christ everywhere. Amen. That was Paul, okay? Now, but see, Christ had more Christ had something more for this apostle to preach. Now, you say, well, he did more than Christ? No, he's going to open up Christ. That's what, that's what Paul was going to do. Paul was going to turn them 
from darkness to light. How was he going to do this? He was going to open up the person of Christ Jesus. He was going to open up salvation in a way that had never been opened up before. They had seen it as a shadow. It was like a shadow. But they, they didn't have any substance. It pointed to the substance, but what good is that? Well, now the true light shined. It shined in Paul. What did he do? Went everywhere, preaching Christ. <clears throat> he says what he told him. <clears throat> he had some specific training that he was going to do in Paul. So it's very specific things. Rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. This is, there's a reason why I appeared to you today, Paul. It's not just random, not at all. I'm going to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which I've seen. Now, you're going, to, you're going to give this testimony to more than one person. This testimony is going to go out. But that's not all, Paul. And of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. In other words, Paul was going to be given some further revelation. More. Now, this revelation is more than the other apostles received. You, know, you don't see the things that Paul talked about being spoken of. Many of them by any other apostle than Paul. Why? Because this was a choice vessel. Jesus chose him. <clears throat> in Paul's testimony to the Galatians, <clears throat> when he was talking to the Galatians about the things that had happened unto him and how it had fallen out, this is what he told them. I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. What I'm out there preaching is not something I've come up with on my own. This is something that Jesus gave me, and if you listen to me, you'll understand Jesus more perfectly. Amen. If you just listen to what I'm preaching to you, you'll be able to be turned from darkness to light. You'll be, you'll be able to say no to sin if you just listen to what I'm telling you. Yeah. Why? Because Jesus sent him. He made him a minister to be able to open up the gospel. Yeah. What he said, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught. Thank you. Taught of it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion, and many my equals, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But there came a time when God looked down from heaven on me. He looked down, what did he see? He saw a faithful servant. One that was giving all diligence. Paul wasn't like playing around. Paul wasn't playing religion. Paul was seeking to do God's will. <clears throat> he was exceedingly zealous. That's what it says. Yeah. And God took note of that. Now see, God already knew. Why was Paul exceeding zealous? Because God was going to use him in this work. Amen. God was going to give him some things that it required an exceeding zealous servant. He had to excel above his peers. He had to because God was going to call him to do some things that only he could do. All right. When it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me. Why? That I might preach him among the heathen. He said, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. Paul's telling them. When I, was, when I was converted, I didn't run up to Jerusalem and ask them, what do you think? What do you think I should be preaching, Paul? I mean, Peter, uh, come on, tell me, James, should I, should I be um, preaching this or should I be preaching that? Where should I, well, what area of study should I get into? That's what Paul did. This is not what Paul did. Paul didn't go to the college and say, what do you think I should I be, a youth preacher? Is that what you think I should be, Paul? No, this is what he did. He said, I conferred not with flesh and blood. I didn't ask any man what to do. I knew what to do. I knew what to do. I went, this is what he says, I went into Arabia. I went where there wasn't anybody. Amen. I went to the backside of the desert. I went there for one reason and one reason alone, to receive the further revelation that God was going to give me. I went up to Jerusalem later. He said, after three years, after three years, now, he had extensive revelation for three years. Now, you know, we know that the, the other apostles, they, had, they were with Jesus for three years. This didn't strike us as unusual. It's just he spent three years with a risen Christ. 
He spent three years w w w receiving these, these things that no one else talked about except for the Apostle Paul. Why? Because he was an apostle to the Gentiles, to kings, and to the children of Israel. This one's going to, he's unique. All right, afterwards he went, he said, all right, <clears throat> now I'm done with my training. Now I'm going to go to Jerusalem, and I'm going to compare notes. I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to subject, I'm allow myself to be subjected to some scrutiny. I'm going to talk over these things. And, and <laughs> when he's done, the things that they exhorted him to do, he said, I was already, I was already going to do those things. He, I said, he said, there wasn't anything. He said, I went and talked to them. They didn't add one thing to me. Wow. Why does Paul give this synopsis of his conversion and training as an apostle? Because he wants men to understand that the message that he's been given to preach was not, did not find its genesis in him or in his ability. It's what God worked in him that was the, Paul pointed the fingers at this all the time. Yeah. Not, it's not I, but the grace that's working in me. It's my understanding that this three-year period, it was during this three years, this extended time with Jesus, that Paul was given to know the things that he would later reveal to the churches. These things that were unique to Paul. This is Ephesians 3.1, listen to this. this is, these are unique things. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. Paul, Paul wasn't guessing about this. Paul knew exactly where God had put him. He, would, he, call, he called himself oh, uh, the prisoner of Jesus for you, for your sake. I've subjected, I haven't even taken a wife because for you, for you. For, for you Gentiles, I, God put me here, God enabled me, God gave me revelation, and now I know this is exactly where I need to be. And this is, this is the place where it pleased him. Remember the care of the church would fall on him every day? Why did he allow himself to be subjected to that? Because he was called to this place. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me, you word, God gave me something for you. In other words... Unless I preach the things that God has given me to see, you won't be who you're supposed to be. You won't understand. You won't be enlightened. You won't be completely turned from darkness to light unless I preach Christ and Him crucified. And unless Christ is opened up. I mean, you come into Christ and you're, you're, you're made whole. Your sins are taken away. You're complete in Christ. But until this is expounded, until it's opened up, until you really know what happened... At your conversion, you're not going to be able to be steady, steadfast, and unmovable. See, th this is we need. God set some in the church, first apostles, see, that prophets and teachers. Why? Because we need them. That's why. We need to be able to hear sound, the proclamation about what Jesus accomplished on our behalf. He's given to me you word. How that by revelation, see, it wasn't like Paul made it up. By revelation, he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when you read it, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I am made a minister." This is for the very reason that Paul was made a minister, that he might expound these things that had been shut up and hid from the foundation of the world, which means that God didn't share them with anybody else to the extent that he shared them with Paul. Now, this is alarming yeah. in our time because, well, you'll scarcely find someone that is even concerned what Paul is teaching. And if they do, they're very shallow or they have arguments. They want to argue with this apostle that was given special revelation of these secret things. Yeah. Doesn't really make any difference at this point what translation you use. The question is, is do you understand what you're reading? 
See, Paul understood. That's why Paul could open it up so precisely. That's why he could cast down imaginations and every thought, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Why could he do it? Because he understood what was going on. Amen. Paul, remember, he, he would pray. This is how, when Paul hears about an assembly having faith, does he just sit back and say, well, that's nice. No, this is how he prays. This is how Paul prays for you. All right? He, this is how he'll pray that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. This is what Paul prayed. Why? Because Paul knew that God was bringing down the wall. You see, if Paul hadn't known this, there, I'm telling you, there's too many obstacles in between the Jew and the Gentiles for Paul, being a Hebrew, to have been an effective minister to the Gentiles. There's too many differences. How are you going to minister to these Gentiles? Well, they haven't been schooled by the law, right? They were not a people. They were without God in the world. They didn't have any promises. How's Paul going to preach to these? What's he going to tell them? But see, Paul knew something that, that not very many other people knew. God was bringing down the wall. See, there was, the difference between these two nations was in the gospel was going to be whether or not they believed or whether or not they didn't believe. Amen. See, so the, it kind of simplified the whole thing. Paul's ministry now takes out a new light. I'll go in, I'll preach Christ and him crucified. This is what um, Paul knew the condition of the Gentiles. Paul wasn't naive about this. Paul wasn't like hoping, I sure hope this whole thing works out. This is what he said. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. He knew exactly how the Gentile nations were. He knew exactly what they were. Having the understanding darkened. All right, now you're sent... You're, put yourself in Paul's shoes now. You're sent as an apostle to the Gentiles, to a nation that you know by revelation that God's darkened. He's darkened them. But see, Paul knew that he was, he was going to come there and preach the light. He was going to make them see. And that changes it. It changes how you come to them. He, he was sent by Christ to turn them. Now, he, in order, see, he, knew, he knew their present condition which actually needs to, needs to be known if you're going to be, be of some help to someone. you got to kind of know where they're at. Where they... Paul knows that God is doing a new thing. Jesus, he's breaking down this middle wall of partition. He's bringing them together in one. So what did he do? He preached the one that they were being brought into. <laughs> it's like a secret. Paul's total and complete dependency is not on his Jewish upbringing, but it's on the, the, the message of the gospel that he had received from Christ. This, um, this message, remember Paul was the one who told the Romans, I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise, so as much as, 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 much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. I know the remedy for your situation. It's Christ. This is, this is a remedy. That you hear the message that God's done, what God's done in Christ for you. And Paul was able to open it up. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. I, I know. See, Paul wasn't guessing. Paul knew this would do that. This would bring them, anyone who believed, would bring them in to a place where they could be built up in the most holy faith. Jesus sent Paul to turn the Gentiles from the power of Satan unto God that, that they may receive the forgiveness of sins. Okay, you know, it, when you get right here, when, you, when you're talking about sins, we're talking about an even playing field anyway. Yeah. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, Paul sent to the Gentiles, but see, his ministry, the things that he said were universal. They could be preached to the Jews or to the Gentiles. Why? Because they were talking about taking your sin away. They were talking about being acceptable to God. They were talking about being having a good conscience and being able to come confidently into the presence of God without a shamed face. 
These things, they, they talked about what God was doing. And so they were universal. So I can see how these very things, these are the very things that are going to bring anyone, no matter who you are, no matter where you're at, these are the things that are going to bring someone to Christ. And so that's why Paul's ministry was so effective. And it's still so effective. Right now, if the church would just overnight say, we're going to abandon all this psychological approach to salvation, and we're going to start listening to our apostle, Amen. They, it would do them good. They would do them good. If Paul was given to see all these great things, then the question is, if Paul was given to see all these great things and he preached them, then any, can anybody expect to see them independent from Paul? I mean, really now, to the person, are they so vain and prideful to think that God's going to hand them to them personally when he's already sent them an apostle? It doesn't make any sense when you think about it. Paul was sent to turn you. The question is, is will you be turned? I remember years ago, just a few years ago, Brother Gibbon published a list of 74 things that are unique to the Apostle Paul's ministry. I thought at the time, I didn't know there was so many. I didn't know the list was so extensive, but it is. You start looking into it. Paul was given to see great, I, Kim, I'm amazed that he could get this much in three years. See, this is something, I, I'm, I'm convinced that this is something that was a continual thing. Paul was growing in this revelation it, and, and, and the effectiveness, his ability to be able to expound it. See, Paul knew how to preach Christ. And if you listen to him, he'll teach you. See, to our own measure, you, you said, now are your lights in the Lord, right? To your own measure, as you understand, as you're being given to comprehend the glories of the gospel, and you see what Christ really accomplished, as you, see, now as you understand it, now you're, you're actually, you, you can become employed by God to preach Christ. And he'll use you. If you, if you, um, if you can see things, unique things about Christ. Now, I don't, I'm going to tell you, I don't believe that I know anything that's, that Paul didn't. I'll tell you right now, I don't believe, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I, don't, I thought about it. Every single thing that's down there, I got it from Paul, who got it from Jesus, who got it from God. And see, now, I don't need anything more than that. See, one, is gonna, one of these days, we're going to be there, we're going to be with him, and we're going to see all these things that God showed Paul. And Paul was faithful to deliver every single one of them to the church. But if you have any understanding concerning these things, I only picked out a handful of these because I, I, we don't have a lot of time to go through all of them. But, um, but um, I only picked out a handful. Very, very unique things. In other words, things that you would not ever understand if Paul hadn't have opened them up. All right? Now, now as I go through this very short list... Just consider, if you understand anything about it at all, you got it from Paul. That's where you got it from. Now, I know I understand that the Holy Spirit may have given you to see it, but you still, the information came through Paul. How about the exposition of justification by faith? Have you been blessed by the ministry of Paul when it comes to faith? What, what you know about faith and what, how it's built you up to understand that you can be justified by faith, not by works of the law, but by faith. You stand before, and you understand that? Paul gave that to you. That came through Paul for you. How about the distinction between the old and the new covenants? How about that? If you got it, if you can understand that and handle it and be able to use it, you got it from Paul. It came through Paul. This was our apostle to the Gentiles. How about the reality of the old man and the new man? How many times, how many hours have been wasted by people sitting around and moping and groaning because they have bad desires, they have bad thoughts, and they don't understand that there's an enemy in there. There's an enemy in there. Paul opened it up. Yeah. Paul could see it clearly. He opened it up. Why? To turn us. He's a good minister. How about the inner warfare experienced by those who have faith? That you're walking by faith. You're doing your best, and there's these arrows flying in. How would you know that it wasn't? You said, it is not I, but sin that dwelleth in me. How would you know that distinction? Paul opened it up. That's why 
the high priesthood of Christ, what took place behind the scenes when Jesus died, why men can, cannot be justified by works, how about the imputation of righteousness upon the basis of faith, how about extensive teaching on the resurrection of the dead, how about extensive teaching concerning the Lord's table, all of these things were given to Paul, and he was a faithful minister. And he opened them up. Why? So the body of Christ could be strong. And you look out on the landscape of today's religion, and it's a shame. Amen. It's a shameful situation that God has given us so much. And yet, see, when men don't believe, no teaching can compensate for that. When men turn their eyes away from faith, it's away from Christ. There's nothing in this world that can compensate for that. Well, but what about when people do hear? How about that? When people do give all diligence, when people do seek him with their whole heart, what does God give them? He'll say, go read somewhere in Romans over there. And now there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, them which walk in the spirit and not in the this, this Paul's been given to us. It's like a gift from God that we might be turned from darkness unto light. Why have I come at this text in this manner? Because God has enabled one man to declare all these good things to the Gentiles for us. See, what? I, I don't know about you, but I'm a Gentile. This excited me. When I started seeing these things, this is what God's done for me. He's given me someone that understood it well enough that they could open it up. And now it all it's going to take now is for you to give all diligence in making your call and election sure. And I've noticed in my own life, in my own life, God didn't send the person of Paul. God sent another person that understood Paul. Amen. What was he able to do? He was able to open it up to me. I mean, I could read it in the Bible. I read it. And I was, what does that mean? Somebody come along and they understood and they preached Christ. They got it from Paul. Paul got it from Christ. And now I'm glorifying God because it, see how it's all opened up. We've been turned. Have you been turned? Amen. We've been turned from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to the power of God. I praise God for the ministers of the gospel that he sent us along the way. Thank you, brother. Amen.